Welcome back to American Agenda. Well, the New York Attorney General's office is looking into the $175 million bond that former President Trump recently posted in his civil fraud case. Now, they're questioning the qualifications of the California company that provided it. Yeah, that's right. The dispute stems from a $454 million judgment that Trump is facing in the case, which the Attorney General's office brought against the former president and his family business. Joining us now to discuss is State Attorney in Palm Beach County, Florida, Dave Ehrenberg, and New York Civil Attorney Nicole Brinecki. We thank you both for coming on, on this lovely Friday with yeah. an earthquake here. I know. <laughs> I didn't feel people? it. You didn't feel that? No. no. I, I don't know why. Okay. Thank Dave. you as well. I definitely felt it. Okay. I was on the 11th floor of a building in uh, downtown Brooklyn, and I felt it. So yeah. uh, I felt it. We felt it yes, here. Yes, we so, did. Yeah. We did. Let's, Sorry, uh, David. Let's I'm very cracking here, Dave. This. Uh, <laughs> This dispute over this yeah. money here. Break this down for us. So the Attorney General, Letitia James, wants to make sure the judgment is secure. So Trump had to post the bond. But the bond poster is a guy named Hanky, Mr. Hanky, which if you're a South you Park fan. Make that I know. <laughs> Come on oh now. Right. Howdy ho. So <laughs> and they want to make sure this guy's for real, that he's properly capitalized, because he's new he's new at doing this. And so but look, I don't think it's a big deal because he just could fill out the paperwork and do it all. It's easy to remedy if he doesn't do it right the first time, as long as he has the money. That's it. Is this, Nicole, something, is this typical? Like, is this something typical, uh, typical, typical of an AG to do? Saying, okay, great, you posted your bond, but you know what, now I'm going to look into it. I'm going to question it. Or is this just another instance of Trump targeting? Well, obviously she wants to uh, win her position. She wants to win uh, the case that she's pursuing, so she will question everything and anything. Um, but, Would she do uh, it if it weren't Donald Trump, do you think? I'm sorry? Would she do it if it were not Donald Trump? Uh, honestly, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for sure, um, they they don't have the qualifications that the New York State requires. So her inquiry on the surface is pretty much legal. So I don't I don't think it's unreasonable. But um, for political reasons, whatever you raise, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to an update now on the uh, former president's the classified records case. The federal judge presiding over the case has denied Trump's motion to dismiss those charges based on the Presidential Records Act. The U.S. District Court Judge Eileen Cannon saying that the charges against Trump, quote, make no reference to the Presidential Records Act, nor do they rely on that statute for the purposes of stating an offense here. Cannon goes on to say that the Presidential Records Act does not provide a pretrial basis to dismiss the case. Dave, did she make uh, the right decision here? Yes, but I don't think she did Jack Smith any favors by not dismissing the case now. See, for Jack Smith, he thinks that Judge Cannon is in the can for Donald Trump, so he wants to be able to appeal her to the 11th Circuit. But the way that she ruled, she left it open to still dismiss it later, or at least to get the stuff in the jury instructions. And if that's the case, once the jury's been seated, then it's too late to appeal. So he, Jack Smith, is in a little bit of a trick bag right now, trying to figure out what to do next. Try to get her recused, or try to do a motion in limine. We'll see. Yeah, interesting. I want to move on to this. It's so many, so many trials. Uh, in other news, the judge overseeing the Georgia election interference case against the former president is rejecting a bid to dismiss the criminal charges against Trump. We heard this yesterday in a 14-page ruling. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee says the right to protest the results of the 2020 presidential election did not protect them from the charges brought by District Attorney Fonnie Willis's office. I don't know, Nicole, a lot of people saying th that was expected. Uh, it wasn't a surprise, but it certainly doesn't mean that there won't be appeals against this case. Doesn't mean that would actually even go to trial. What do you anticipate happening with this? We know Fonnie Willis has already made a soap opera of the whole thing. From my perspective as a practicing attorney, um, I know that uh, very few cases get dismissed pre-discovery and pre-litigation. Um, uh, the, legal, the legal process has to play itself out, even though the general public may think that uh, the cases are baseless. Um, the legal process is what it is. So you, you're entitled to your pleadings, you're entitled to your discovery, you're entitled to your emotions. So um, I, I believe that that's what's happening here is just that it was way too early to dismiss that because there has been no discovery. But uh, once discovery concludes, I think that it will be uh, a determination on the merits so will be based. Still happen, potentially. Yes, All yes, right. absolutely. Okay. Okay. A lot to keep track of. I so know. Yes, cases, for breaking it down for us. Yeah. Seems like he's being prosecuted. Dave Ehrenberg, Nicole Bernanke, thanks for coming on. Thank you.